guest, I want to introduce our team. I'll be the moderator of today's conference. My name is Madonna Ajobadze. I'm the last year neurosurgery resident in Georgia, Sakartvelo, and I'm also a PhD candidate in Tbilisi, capital of the Georgia. A couple of words about our online education meetings. They have started with Professor Hassan Kamil Sujo. Uh, uh, my gratitude to Dr. Hassan for providing such an amazing opportunity to the audience. Uh, he's the program manager of the neurosurgery department in Izmir Atatürk Training and Research Hospital in Turkey. And those lectures go on with the contribution of all the residents and also with the contribution of all the neurosurgeons who have graduated from the same department, as well as neurosurgeons and neurosurgery residents from nearby countries like mine, Georgia, Sakatolo, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, and many others. Uh, about the protocol of today's meetings, in order to avoid any voice or noise pollution, all the microphones will be turned off during the presentation of the lecture, but you can ask your questions writing, by writing them in the uh, chat part of the Zoom program. And I assure you, at the end of the lecture, I'm going to ask them to the lecture, and all of the questions will be discussed accordingly. Uh, however, mutual discussion is not appropriate for the format of our meeting. And now, without the further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest. Uh, it's my distinct privilege and honor to present our lecturer today, uh, Professor Dr. Yoko Kato. Uh, she's a professor and the chair of the Department of New Surgery at the Fujita Health University. She's the first woman in Japan to, uh, to be promoted to the full professor of neurosurgery. Yoko Kato specializes in the surgical treatment of the cerebrovascular disease, particularly in aneurysms, arteriovenous malformations. She has performed more than 1,800 brain aneurysmal clipping procedures throughout her career. She is famous for the advancement of the neurosurgery in the developing countries by directly mentoring the neurosurgeons, organizing the educational courses, uh, donating funds for the neurosurgical equipment, and so on. She is also an advocate for the inclusion of a woman in neurosurgery, and she has founded Women's Neurosurgery uh, Call Association in Japan in 1992. I was 90, sorry, I wasn't even born there. Uh, and like in, when I learned that I'm going to be a moderator, I was starstruck <laughs> because she's my icon, and I was struggling to find the right words how to describe her and her dedication to the. Uh, the field of neurosurgery. And then uh, Dr. Hassan sent me this article that was uh, written by the, another female neurosurgeon in Mumbai uh, that was published in Neurosurgery Focus. And I think those words really resonated and really fit and suit her perfectly. So with your permission, I'm going to read a couple of uh, the pieces from this article. Of course, credits to the author. Uh, neurosurgery is one of the most challenging specialties in medicine, where enormous efforts is combined with the fine technicality. It has been a male-dominated profession for a long time, and it is only in recent years that the women have started venturing into this male-dominated realm. The presence of women in neurosurgery is slowly but surely gaining momentum. But history is ripe with the struggles of pioneering women who entered the neurosurgical profession against all odds, formed a firm foothold, and built a legacy for generations to emulate. If it were not for the uh, efforts of such extraordinary, strong individuals like Yoko Kato, a wing of women in neurosurgery would not have advanced to its present day status. They have laid an example with their exemplary surgical skills, their leadership, and their mentorship. From very early on, Professor Kato has been actively involved in inspiring and encouraging female physicians to pursue the field of neurosurgery. Professor Yoko Kato has spent her entire lifetime in the service of neurosurgery and taken it to the remotest corners of the world. Her persistence and conviction have made her one of the most admired neurosurgeons in the world and the most loved neurosurgeon for those in less privileged countries. She has inspired and trained an entire generation of neurosurgeons. Her contributions will always be a glorious chapter in the World Book of Neurosurgery. Welcome again, Professor Yoko Kato. Um, 
don't worry, Gato Hosemasu. Now you can start <laughs> uh, your uh, screen sharing. Thank you so much. So, ar arigatou. <laughs> so, thank you very much for your very kind introduction. I'm so happy to be invited. The very, very famous and the very traditional the Izmir online neurosurgery the educational course. So I was uh, asked to talk about the treatment of the recurrent aneurysm, either after surgical clipping or after coil embolization. I think a bit uh, the difficult for the young young doctors. I'm so sorry. Can you can you hear? Yes, yes, madam, professor. I'm so sorry because I have to check, check once again. Can, can you wait a bit, please? It does not uh, proceed. Professor, your uh, microphone is off now. You can open on video. Enter. I think Professor has trouble with connection. Yes, yes. Just, just, okay. just, I, we can see yes. you, we can hear you, yeah. It's okay. So, so they you? you can take your time. I think it's starting. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Yes. <laughs> can you can you hear? Yes. Can Clearly. you see? Okay, so then I start my lecture. So the uh, the philosophy of the treatment. So the uh, anyway, the recurrent the uh, aneurysm treatment is quite uh, uh, difficult. So uh, why it's so difficult? Because because uh, it's uh, the surgery surgery is not only the technically difficult so due to the issue such as a surgical site adhesion. I've shown that, that later in the video, but also the difficult in terms of the decision making during the surgery. So this is a very uh, difficult sometimes, either the, uh, the after coiling or after clipping. So uh, there are so many uh, classification so this is anatomical characteristic of the recurrent aneurysm. So the also uh, Japanese, the Kobayashi the doctor, the, he uh, made some types from uh, type two, three, four. So, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, either the before the surgery, before treatment, that we the analyze of the images. But uh, the, during the surgery, it, it has so many factors, so it's quite difficult to decide uh, uh, during the surgery. So the he uh, class classified is a after neck clipping is uh, the first line is uh, endovascular because of the very huge, very severe the adhesion, and uh, also the aneurysm itself, the uh, aneurysm wall became very thick. And it's quite difficult to uh, the move. So uh, the the endovascular is the first line. Uh, please keep it in mind. And uh, uh, the Kobayashi doctor uh, he uh, classified type one, two, three A, B, and type four. So the he suggested type four is uh, recommended by bypass occlusion and the combined surgery. So but sometimes it uh, cannot be so easily. 
So the endovascular coil embolization can uh, represent a first line treatment. In most frequent aneurysm, we have a complex small bulge. This is uh, uh, that's why the first time the treatment is the most important. And by neck opus, and then uh, uh, the, the recently the evolution of the endovascular techniques such as uh, uh, stent assisting coiling or the, the flow diverter stent, and uh, particularly the, with the uh, uh, treatments the recurrent aneurysm such as the type three A and four. So the, this is another uh, classification. Uh, this is a Raymond a modified Raymond classification. So the recent, the more and more endovascular treatment uh, after the ISAT report. So the, uh, uh, the there are three types the Raymond he uh, indicated the complete the occlusion by coil, and also the residual neck, and also the residual the aneurysm. The class one, two, three A, three B. So clarification of the uh, recanalization, uh, again, the Raymond. So the class one is a total occlusion. Class two is a contrast filling the neck. And class three A is a contrast into uh, to the aneurysm dome due to loose coiling. And class three B is a contrast into the aneurysm dome due to the coil compaction. So this is uh, uh, such kind of the, the fears. So the how uh, the uh, recurrent uh, type we can uh, realize before the treatment. So this is a, a, another classification: the management of the recurrent aneurysm after coil embolization. One, two, three, four, five. So, but uh, uh, either the uh, treatment by coil or the either treatment by clip is almost equal uh, the uh, uh, result. So this is another the classification. Uh, uh, this is two zero two one uh, by uh, Dr. Dolpo. So uh, one is a coil compaction, and uh, the C is uh, the regrowth and D is a fundal migration. So it's quite a difficult the uh, differentiation, uh, but the, uh, just you can uh, in your in your mind. So the coil compaction just recoil embolization and regrowth the recoil embolization or, or the surgical treatment, and the fundal the migration type uh, should be treated by surgically. So, but the morbidity is quite a high number, uh, almost uh, the 11 percentage it is reported. So this is uh, uh, treated by the uh, clipping or bypass. And this is a uh, uh, coil compaction type. It can be treated by the coiling. So the rate and the risk factor <clears throat> for recurrence after coiling so recurrence rate is about 10 to 17 percentage. And the risk factor for recanalization of the aneurysm is a larger type of the, the aneurysm, such as the size is more than 15 millimeter, and neck size is more than four millimeter, the broad base neck. And also the location is a terminal type is more frequent, the recanalization occurring with the sidewall type. And the rupture, the aneurysm, and also the shape is fusiform type and no use of the stent assist, uh, assistance and incomplete embolization or loose coil. Sorry, so the including Japanese, but and also the neck ratio, the, the larger the neck ratio, it, that means is a, a broad base is easy to be recognition. This is a report after flow diverter recognition. And also, the if aneurysm neck is along the greater curve curvature, comparing with the uh, inner side. So this is uh, the report the, uh, the, uh, which was uh, uh, studied CFD. So flow imp impingement into the aneurysm. So this is a uh, the kind of the jet flow. So this is impinging in the tip. Uh, top of the, the vaginal tip aneurysm, and this is a uh, dividing. 
So this is a, a very operative. We can estimate. So if we put the flow diverter, uh, then after uh, the uh, putting the flow diverter, uh, how much easy to be recognized, recognized or not. So this is an indication for surgery in patient after coil embolization. So presence of the remnant after coil. So if there is some remnant parts, of course we can this type or this type, maybe we can put a clip. Sometimes uh, we include of the one or two coil in the clip, so that is okay. Uh, and also the mass sign, mass effect of the coiled aneurysm. And also the recognition and the recourse due to the coil compaction. And also the migration of the coil. So, so this is uh, uh, quite tough, but uh, sometimes uh, they, you do not need to care about uh, uh, the migration of the coils. And the surgical technique and the challenges. So endovascular, uh, the stent assisted coiling or flow diverter is very ideal. And as for the surgical treatment after the recurrent aneurysm, the direct clipping or, or double clipping. And also, oh, if we cannot complete occlusion with the, the clip, so maybe we can add the reinforcement of the anise wall, the, the wrapping. Where recently, the, we use the neoveil, seldom use the muslin or cotton. So clipping anise with uh, the coil extraction is quite difficult. So we cannot ex uh, estimate that we can tear the anise neck. It's sometimes very dangerous. Or of course, the temporary clipping or removal of the coil or clipping. The easy to say the removal of the clip. It, it's also the quite difficult because of the uh, if it's uh, the longer interval. So the clip is also the uh, uh, organized with uh, connective tissue. It's quite a, quite a difficult. So coils moving is. Uh, uh, inevitable with a multiple coil extraction or mass effect. So how then we can, uh, maybe the temporary clip, then the coil removal, the clipping. So but the, uh, even the, uh, we apply the temporary clip, sometimes it's a removal of the coil is very, very difficult. So the trapping uh, with bypass is one of the, the option. So trapping and bypass. So maybe you can use the STA or, or, or radial uh, artery for high flow bypass. So this is our material, uh, very short term. So this is the uh, 938 patient. So this is just the clipping case is uh, uh, the treatment after recurrence. The recurrence ratio, uh, recurrence is uh, the three point two percentage, and uh, previously we put the clip. Then uh, after clip, uh, we put the clip is just uh, four case, zero point four percentage. So after the clipping, uh, we put the coil is uh, twenty six cases, two point eight percentage. So this is uh, one uh, very interesting case. So this uh, patient referred from the another hospital. This is uh, the anusmo case is A1. So here you can see schematic drawing. Uh, uh, three times uh, it's coil. But the uh, angiographically the recognition. So for this case, uh, we abandoned to uh, put the clip around the neck area because almost no or neck. But now you can see the, this is a, the surgical uh, view. So this is this is a second nerve. Mm. Here is a, a second nerve around here. So the uh, already the the coil is protruding of the anusmus sac. 
And uh, uh, here is uh, the, the aneurysm, the part, part of the aneurysm we, now we can see. Then uh, we decided to, to put the uh, SGA to the A3. So we, we made the another craniotomy. Then uh, uh, this is uh, uh, for the anastomosis site. That is the interhemispheric part. Then uh, we can find the SGA. So finally, we place the clip here after the uh, bypass. So the, we should do uh, the uh, harvesting of the SCA much longer than usual SCA MCA. So just uh, you, you can uh, take in care about the, the kinking because the SC is quite alone. Then uh, SDA S3 anastomosis here. Then we close here. So some partially uh, recognized uh, part can be uh, strongbolized. So this is another case. This is a trap after the call. So also that this patient referred from another hospital has three times endovascular treatment. Sometimes they put the stent, sometimes they put the coil. So, but uh, still the aneurysm the growing. So this is uh, almost a mass sign. So a huge mass, the partially thrombosed aneurysm compress the medulla. The patient, the ataxia, and also the some uh, double vision. So the, during the three years, it become the larger and larger. So just uh, just uh, we uh, escape the CSF. Here you can see this is a uh, the giant the aneurysm. So this type of the aneurysm is uh, totally different from the usual the ballooning of the uh, vessel. So this aneurysm uh, became uh, large because of the basal basal of the, the aneurysm. <laughs> So posterior host, uh, the aneurysm surgery is quite difficult because so many the cranial nerves, lower cranial nerves. So in between the lower cranial nerves, we uh, do some work. So just we cut the, the aneurysm sac. Then uh, still uh, the aneurysm is uh, live. Even the angio, we do not see any aneurysm contour. Then uh, here already we can see the coil. This is endoscopic view inside of the aneurysm. So, so many coils was uh, placed in the aneurysm sac. But the aneurysm uh, grows because of the aneurysm neck itself. No, sorry, aneurysm, the wall itself. So basal basal uh, uh, sends some uh, nutrition of the growing of the aneurysm. So then we cut the coil inside of the aneurysm, then we exclude it of the, uh, the coil. Here you can see the stent which was placed. So this is a, a one of the ways. So this is a, uh, another case, is a right A23 large type of the aneurysm, the six years back. So the, when she, the patient was young, yeah, you can see the large the type of the aneurysm. So this is the first time the surgery, the six years back. So this is an interspecific. Uh, spheric approach. 
So this is the arachnoid dissection. So uh, in typical approach, uh, just uh, uh, you should keep in mind uh, how precise the cut only the arachnoid. Now uh, already we can see the uh, anusum baluri. So there is uh, some color is changing uh, close to the uh, anusum neck, but we are not sure until where is the aneurysm, the pathological wall. But uh, we must uh, uh, keep the, uh, some parts of the aneurysm neck because of the, uh, we cannot make a stenosis of the main uh, trunk of the uh, A3. So after placing of the uh, temporary clip, So we place, the, we choose such a type of the, the angled uh, clip. So if the, the anus, uh, the clip, uh, deeper than this place, maybe it makes some stenosis of the main trunk, uh, main branch. So I think this is uh, just suitable, just uh, uh, decorate the best place. We thought, we thought at that time. So we use the uh, angled two clip from the both sides. Then uh, we check the ICG, everything. So normal flow inside of the, the angles. Then we finish the, the, the surgery at that time. So this is a post, the first surgery, something like this. Then after six years, the uh, patient get, came to us again, but uh, nothing but she, she was very good condition. We checked the, uh, the MRI, yeah, then uh, uh, we growing. So this is a, a second, uh, sec after second surgery, how uh, we put the clip. So we put the three clips additionally. So we cannot have a, the good explanation why it uh, recognized. So this is the MRI. Right? So the second surgery uh, already I mentioned, uh, the very severe adhesion. So this is the old clip uh, uh, after six years. Here you can see there's so many connective tissues uh, around the clip itself. And also the uh, neck area, uh, which uh, the first time the, the, the clip placed, uh, there's so many connective tissues. So it's quite it's quite difficult to uh, move or remove. So we uh, uh, gave up to remove the first uh, the surgery the clip, and also the aneurysm the uh, the wall is, itself is became very thick. And also quite difficult because it cannot uh, move easily. Then we expose of the recurrent uh, part of the aneurysm. So this is endoscopic viewing. So this is a, a almost uh, uh, invaded uh, 
with the uh, connected tissue. So this is a recent the Stoll's uh, uh, endoscope. We can see the ICG. So it's quite a useful report. So we can check the very deep place, the, especially the perforators. So this is a recanalized the part. So we must work very deep a place. So for this case, uh, uh, we try with uh, the longer size of the uh, anus screw. The anus wall itself is very the, becoming thick, so it's quite difficult to uh, include all the anus with uh, uh, even the, such a long uh, blade. Then we place one more for reinforcement, complete occlusion. But still, uh, we have some this part is remaining. Here. Still, some uh, uh, aneurysm is remaining, but the uh, uh, clip itself is uh, slipping out because of the uh, aneurysm sac became very uh, the thick. So the, now you can realize the first surgery was very very important. So the, this is another case, is MCA, so this is a clip after clip, so this is a pre retreatment, so uh, this is a, a recanalization, the regrowing, so this part. So the, uh, when we the, treat the uh, recurrent, the, the aneurysm, so it's quite difficult because the anatomy is totally changed and also the uh, we can make a quick decision how we can treat so the uh, dura became very sick the, the ideal uh, is uh, if you can uh, remove the previous clips but now you can see it's quite difficult because of the uh, very uh, uh, difficult to, to move with the connective tissue. And this part is a re recanalization part. So this is a, a previous clip. So uh, this case, uh, the angle could be placed. But here you can see just the clip is slipping out because of the, the thickness of the wall. It became the thick of the endless wall wall itself and also the with uh, uh, some connective tissue. But, uh, we can realize that because the uh, dinosaur sac became very sick, so it's a uh, uh, very less chance uh, to uh, rupture in the future. So this is a uh, uh, Case three, and this is a clip after coil case. This is a, a black liner. So here is uh, the coil part and some 
residual realization spot. So all the case we check the CFD before surgery. So that we realize which part is a very thick, thin wall and thick wall. So this is the left side. This is the sec second nerve. Here you can see already that this is a, the partially the coiled the aneurysm. Here is a, the, the IC. C3, C4, C5, something like that. So just behind this, the IC. So we compare the CFD, and some part is very, very thin, a thin wall. So the, with endoscope, we can uh, the now understand that some part is a uh, uh, recognition. So this is a superior or hypophysial artery. It's most important that we need to check when we uh, place a clip. So the, the first clip was placed something like this. And the uh, uh, remnant part of the aneurysm, we place the second clip. Just we are we are just focus on the uh, superior hypophysial artery, uh, which is a nutrition for the, the second nerve. And the second clip, the, here you can see until here, and you can see the coil. So this is a uh, recognize uh, the nice part of the leg. So from the both side, we uh, occlude the aneurysm completely. So just we, we focus on the uh, superior or hypophysial artery because it's most important for treating of the calcline reactions. So this is a post-op, uh, additionally two clips. So this is a recognized part, uh, this is a good with the two clips. So this is the, another case, uh, again is a uh, post coiling. I mean, this is a palaclinal. So always we need to remove the anterior process. Then we peel uh, the outer membrane. Then we, we can make a very flat surgical field. Then we can uh, have a more mobilization of the uh, internal cultural artery. And again, this is the left side. So this is a superior hypophysial artery, which I mentioned. So here, the uh, partially we can recognize that lies the part is here, and here is the partially coil. You can see the coil here. Here you can see the coil, the coil compaction has occurred. So, uh, so during the surgery, we cannot tell which one is uh, uh, Raymond. Uh, 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 the classification type A or type 1 or type 2 is quite difficult to say. So we can judge so during the surgery. So this is ophthalmic artery, this is second one. So 
So again, here is a severe uh, hypophysial artery, so we can see very clearly. So here is the aneurysm, and here is a uh, recanalized part. We can see very precisely. So, so this time, this time that we put the, uh, such a clip, we choose. Maybe a, we put the uh, include of the one or two coils uh, in the clip. But it's it's fine. It's okay. Then we can check the ICG normal feeling. The energy side. Then we can check with the uh, uh, endoscope. So, so this is the second clip that you you saw. So it cannot be closed because of the uh, anesthesia coil, but it's okay. But it's just re re imposed. So this is a nail bell that and glue. This is a poster. So maybe this is the final case. So this is again uh, the left giant uh, anismal recognition. So the Patient had a first surgery by clipping, but the clip is already the out uh, out of the, the aneurysm site, and uh, or by the coiling. But again, in some organization here. So this is a CFD tell us uh, some very small but thin wall part here. So in this case, uh, uh, we abandoned the attack of the aneurysm itself. Then we did the hyperbypass and occlude the IC. So this is just harvesting the radial artery. Almost you can have the almost 17 or 18 centimeters. Here is a, a, a re expose of the M2 or uh, hyperbypass. So, this is uh, the regular artery. So the regular artery, the, the best fit for the artery. The uh, pain is uh, it's okay, but the uh, thickness of the wall uh, is uh, uh, a bit thin for for the artery. So this is the delivery of the radial artery graft into the neck. Then uh, we could clear of the, uh, the M2 part. Then uh, radiology into the M2. So both sides of the shooting. Then, uh, Radiology come to the, the next side. 
So anastomosis is going to the uh, ECA. Sorry. So, so that is one of the, the uh, option when a recurrent of the animation. So this is a, the summary. So different treatment strategy after recurrent several animations, intra animal coil compaction, recoil embolization. So the first stage, the, it is treated by coil. Then the second stage should be treated by coil. Coil, coil is uh, the first one. So, anismal the regrowth best managed to surgically when it is technically feasible for recoil embolization. The pandal migration, the surgical management. The overall treatment mobility was 11.9% is quite a high number. But this is a, a bit the older data. So, the result is significant uh, differences between the surgical 15.6% uh, and endovascular. The treatment groups. So I, I think uh, the maybe in the first time the judgment uh, how uh, we can treat uh, the aneurysm uh, is the decision making is most important because uh, either the uh, coiling or either the clipping after the first uh, the treatment is quite difficult and we need a uh, uh, much more the strategy and the technical, uh, I think, uh, uh, techniques is uh, needed. So hopefully you can understand uh, some of part of my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've got um, a lot of comments from the audience, but before I go to the chat section, I wanted to ask my question. Um, what is like? What are the indications that, uh, depending on what you make a decision, whether you gonna go with a, a second uh, endovascular surgery or whether you consider this aneurysm, this is clippable, uh, and you go with the open surgery. Yes. Uh I mentioned in my uh, in my lecture, so how much remnant part of the aneurysm, mm -hmm. and also the first line is uh, first treatment uh, the coiling the coil the additional coil mm -hmm. is very ideal, uh, but I think uh, uh, the clipping is uh, the most reliable. Maybe we we should prevent of the uh, next time of the recanalization. Uh, Hopefully, if there is some remnant part of the neck, uh, I recommend the clip. Thank so you very much. Morphology, the shape of the aneurysm mm -hmm. after recognition or after, uh, uh, after surgery, so that is most important. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. A uh, female neurosurgeon from Turkey, Selim Bozdag, uh, wrote, thank you very much for your inspiring presentation. It is an honor for us to host you. And I share uh, the sentiments with Dr. Selim here. Uh, Mark Andre, medical student from the uh, in Georgia, wrote, thank you. Uh, another medical student from Georgia, Maria Natsalishrili, a future neurosurgeon, <laughs> female neurosurgeon, uh, says, thanks a lot. You, you have uh, inspired me already for four years. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. um, medical student Afan uh, Ahmad from uh, in Georgia uh, writes, thank you for sharing your experience and amazing presentation. I have a question. After this incredible aneurysm surgery, can patient perform hard work activities like gym uh, without any problem? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question is, after the surgery, can the patient perform the hard uh, work activities like gym, like lifting, probably <laughs> weights or so? Can, can you ask me? Do, do yeah, you yeah, ask yeah. Me? 
Yes, they are asking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so after treatment, what what do you want to know? Um, can they perform um a hard work activities like gym, lifting oh, yes, weights or so? Yes, mm -hmm. they can do everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bektash Achikus, maybe would you like to speak? Uh, can you unmute him, Dr. Selim, so he can ask you? Thank you very much, Professor, uh, sharing you. your great work with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm also thankful for clearly underlying the importance of microsurgery in aneurysm surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Noor, uh, uh, thanks you, madam, for amazing talk, like always. Uh, Dr. Murad Ulutash from Turkey says, what are the advantages of using an endoscope during the surgery? Advantages of using endoscope. Do you ask me? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> of course, uh... So endoscope is uh, very close to the uh, ob object objective. So mm -hmm. we can uh, uh, see very clearly and also high illumination. And also the, maybe we can uh, check the uh, from the many angle. Mm -hmm. So I think if, if possible, uh, you can check after the microsurgery, uh, maybe you can use endoscope or time to time you can introduce the endoscope. Mm -hmm. Then you can check that it, most important thing is uh, how to preserve the perforators. Sometimes we include all the perforators in the clip. That is very dangerous for the patient. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and other thanks from Georgia, medical student Tony Gerochikawa, thanks you for your lecture. And Nurullah Kuzmene uh, from Turkey, a neurosurgery resident, thanks you for a great lecture. And lastly, we've got last comment here, Talman Aliyev. Um, thank you, Professor Yoko, arigato. Why are, uh, why are the Japanese more prone to aneurysm than Caucasian people or European people? That's uh, the question from Talman Aliyev. Yes, yes. So it is said, so Japan and Finland has a uh, high frequency of the, the number of the aneurysm incidents. But recent paper, it, it does not, uh, not only the Japan or, or Finland, but I think uh, in Asia, maybe uh, more uh, frequent comparing with uh, Europe or America, I think. Uh, we, we do not know the, the exact reason, but I think in the future, more and more endovascular, less invasive treatment for the patients is, uh, 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 mm -hmm. how do you say, is the, the usual treatment in future. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for the younger generation, uh, you, uh, they may you know, have a, not so many chance to see the direct uh, the open surgery. So if they have a chance to see the open surgery, I think it's a quite good chance for them to learn. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. Uh, now we've got uh, Shanghai Huashan Hospital is watching you and sends their gratitude. And Mawa, thank you so much. And I think uh, Mariam Masushiri has raised her hand. Dr. Selim, maybe we'll let her um, speak for herself. Mariam, can you hear my voice? Yes, we can see you and we can hear you. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Hello. First of all, mm -hmm. I, I want yes. to again express my uh, respect to you because, as I mentioned, already four years I am aspired from you. And when I saw your biography and everything, I'm really inspired from you. So uh, I wanted to ask how often you are using laparoscopic or robotic surgery during uh, aneurysm treatment, how often you are using that, and can you mention, for example, indications of them or contraindications? Uh, I mean, uh, is it better to do sometimes that laparoscopic or robotic surgery during aneurysm treatment or not? Thanks again. So, I think uh, still. She meant endoscopic and robotic, yeah, I guess. Robot, yeah. Robot, robot, robotic, yes, yes. So uh, it's very uh, ideal in the future, but I think uh, uh, 
the vessel uh, in the brain is so small. So I think uh, still it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, take a take a time to introduce the robotic surgery for the, the vascular, maybe the bypass surgery. So such a big vessels can be <laughs> in near future, I think. But uh, the clipping or some uh, small uh, uh, precise work uh, still uh, we need the time, I think. Thank you. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Tillman uh, wrote the reduction in smoking is significantly less uh, the aneurysm in the Finland in Europe. What about in Japanese? Reduction in smoking. Yeah. Smoking? Yes, yes. Uh, smoking habit is decreasing now. Mm -hmm. So it's already uh, in Japan, almost uh, common sense now. <laughs> Great to yeah, hear of that. Course, uh, one of the big factor is smoking and uh, too much drinking and hypertension. <laughs> that is a uh, uh, factor to grow yeah. the energy. Uh, thank you so much for all your questions, comments, words of gratitude. Thank you, Dr. Yokokato. Domo arigato gozaimasu once again. We'll see you soon. Uh, Dr. Stelin, maybe you have a question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. This thank, is you, thank you so much. Okay. So and maybe I... we can have some gathering in the near future. Yes, I will. Oops. And I can ask a question, uh, not about aneurysm surgery, but perhaps a social perspective. I am a neurosurgeon working in a small state uh, for a one year. I don't have uh, a significant experience in aneurysm surgery alone, and I don't have experienced uh, anesthesi anesthesia team. I'm sending bleeding uh, emergency aneurysm cases to uh, cap capital city, to Ankara, uh, 200 kilometers away. It takes three hours by uh, ambulance. I had no problems with the patients. Uh, I referred to advanced center. And, and uh, nowadays I'm thinking, uh, should uh, aneurysm treatment be available in every city or every hospital, or should certain regional centers be chosen uh, for this? What are you thinking about it? Yes, uh, in Japan, we have many hospitals, and also the suburban hemorrhage. Uh, we, most of the hospital can uh, do the surgery or, or endovascular. But I think uh, centralization, maybe if there is a big hospital, maybe you can send standardism. I think that is uh, one of the, the solution in the future. So. And yeah. also heli helicopter. <laughs> yes. Helicopter yeah. to the Ankara, something like that. <laughs> but I think uh, uh, rupture dynamism uh, will be treated by endovascular is uh, the first line, I think. No. Yes, uh, we uh, now uh, don't have uh, uh, end endovascular treatment option. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, maybe in future. <laughs> yeah, maybe in future. Yes, yes. So yeah, younger generation uh, in Japan, we have a, a hybrid neurosurgeon. That means is uh, open that they can do the open surgery and also the endovascular treatment both. And they, they, uh, that we can have a both uh, board certificate. Amazing. They can decide, Thank you. They can Thank decide you. by themselves. Yes. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. And we lost, uh, we got last comment from Geoffrey Portillo from the uh, Ecuador, who sends a lot of thanks uh, for the great lecture, Dr. Professor Kato. Thank you. Thank you. For... Uh, thank you all for your contribution. I think it was a great session today. Uh, thank you, Professor Kata, again. I thank hope you. to meet you in person whenever you are in Turkey or in Georgia. <laughs>
yeah we'll be honored to host you anytime thank yeah, you so yeah, much yes. we um, can have a small gathering i'm Bye -bye. ending the meeting thank you yes. there you go